Okay, so I decided to stream me P ranking the entirety of Vault Skill on Violent Difficulty. And a few weeks ago, I arrived on the final level, P2. Now, as some of you are sure to know, this level is the hardest in the game, and it has two bosses, one of which being the hardest in the game. The conditions to P rank it are 59 kills, 36,000 style points, no deaths, and a time of 10 minutes, 20 seconds, or less. Now, I knew this would be very difficult, right? But this took me nine free hour streams to write and complete it all. So, here is a stupid video I made out of it. Okay, so the first room is called Weezer Room by the community for um, reasons. And it spawns four Cerberuses, which is a four giant dudes, and a fairy man, which is basically just a scrawny twink in a ghost costume. Okay, so the scrawny twink may be a mini boss, and this room may be very small, so it's hard to dodge. But with my patented technique, ADT, Advanced Disintegration Techniques, it becomes quite easy to kill all but one or two Cerberuses, which may sound like a bad thing, but it's actually really good, because it helps us meet the style requirement later on in the level. Now, ironically, the best strategy for dealing with a skinny twink is blowing yourself up. No, that is not a joke. You overload your shotgun, so you pump it up too many times. You dash, so you iframe for the explosion as you pull the trigger, and it fucking obliterates him. And then if, like, he's still alive, you just shoot some spare change at him, and he dies. Now, you may have noticed some lasers trying to smite me while we were fighting the fairy man. These are these two enemies out here. They are virtues. They can shoot layers at you, and if you take too long to kill them, they'll get pissed off at you. Now, that'll never happen. We are too fast and too furious. They cannot handle the neutron style. Yeah, so when virtues die, they fucking explode. But it does no damage. It just launches you. So, using that, we can make the V1 cannon. Fuck you, Paha Blast. Now, to deal with the yellow robot, we don't like the yellow robot for two reasons. One, there's a superior twink yellow robot, and two, he is just kind of cringe and loud and there's too many. So, we get him on his knees, and then we shoot explosions into him. Pretty simple. This will be a reoccurring theme. The rest of the room is quite easy. You just go around your shotgun, cleaning up. Oh, yeah. Don't mind that. We'll talk about that in a second. Now for this next room, I pose an important question. Have you ever wondered if you can snap a stone golem's neck? To answer your question, the answer is yes. You flamethrower, fuck! Wait a second. Before we enter this room, I'd like to explain something. Now you may be thinking, yeah these rooms seem difficult, but there are easy ways around it. There's always a strategy. What makes this level so hard that you had to make a video on it? Well, if people were to ask me what the hardest part of this entire level is, it would, without a doubt, not be the double boss, but this room, the fucking plaza. The reason for this room's difficulty is simple, the two mind flares, more specifically the immortal mind flares. For those that don't know, there are these statues called idols. They can make one enemy invulnerable until you punch and break the idol, but in this room it's locked behind two waves of enemies while the mind flares also attack you. Just to emphasize how insane that is, mind flares can teleport, fly, punch you, shoot lasers and fire home projectiles. You have to dodge, parry and avoid both mind flares attacks while you fight other difficult enemies like two sword machines plus there's a sentry in the back trying to slay you. Not to mention that's only the first wave and you can fight with mind flares at the same time once you clear both waves. It took me a long time but I have a strategy for this room. First you hug the left wall, move quickly to the sentry spawn while overloading your shotgun. As he spawns, punch with the blue fist, dash off the platform, blow him up. This should leave him incredibly low health, so later on he's easy to finish off if he's being inconvenient. Next, dash to the back of the room while making a saw trap and parrying the mind flares projectiles into the sword machines. This should put them into their second stage and have them kneel on the floor before they recover. Use this opportunity to do a large amount of damage. The best way to do it is to use an AoE blast. 
do not use your railgun though. Next, line yourself up with the sides of the room and grapple up to a virtue as soon as it spawns. Aim your blue railgun at the virtue on the other side of the room and pull the trigger. This should kill both virtues. Then swap to your red fist, attack Maurice by punching, shooting, then swapping your shotgun, punch and then shoot again. This should keep you a high health while killing them very quickly. Now all you have to do is destroy both idols and kill the mind flares. There are two ways to destroy the idols. You can either use the red fist and try to destroy both at once with the big blast range. Or you can use the blue fist by punching one and dashing so you don't get launched away, then meleeing the off. upper. There are also two ways to kill the mind flares. The safe way, which gives you less style points but is easier. Or the stylish way. The safe way is pretty simple. You shoot a drill into a mind flare. You equip the red fist so you don't punch it out. You grapple, punch, shoot, shotgun swap, rinse repeat and because of the drill you'll heal constantly and you won't be able to teleport away. The stylish way is basically freestyling. You'll swap weapons more you'll get hit less because you're moving more instead of just face tanking the mind flares. For example I use the shotguns, red fist, blue fist, railgun and the marksman. So just by using two other pieces of equipment that being the blue fist and the marksman I'm able to parry and combo a lot more allowing me to keep my weapons fresh and give me more style points. Oh shit. That just is upsetting, but okay. It is what it is. Fuck it. I'm, I'm not upset. I'm like, come on, it's just my drill. <laughs> Fuck you. Stinky. Next you pick up the blue skull and go back the way you came. The next area is easy because we can scrongle the enemy. All you have to do is rush right over this pit and the boss will get strongled. You only have to fight one which is pretty easy because you can just make a saw trap and shoot him with the red bomber and the piercer. This room is called the Blood Tunnel. As you can see in this clip, everything but the platform will damage you, including the walls, ceiling, and floor. It is filled with enemies that can launch you in different directions, but this room is pretty easy if you know what you're doing. All you have to do is walk into the room and immediately nuke the virtues, launching them into the walls, instantly killing them. Then use the red fist and shotguns to kill a Maurice. Using the Maurice's cover from the sentries, it's quite easy to get close to it. The next part of the room is even easier. Pump up your shotgun twice, then immediately grapple the Morris at the back of the room. Red fist and shotgun him until he dies and falls on the floor. If you do this correctly, it should make a shockwave, launching both sentries into the roof, killing them. Next, charge up your SRS cannon and change back to the blue fist. Shoot the cannon at the left Cerberus. When the cannonball bounces up, grapple it, then parry it back into him. This should kill him instantly. Now all you have to do is hide behind the Morris head so you don't get blown up and shoot some saw blades. Now, this is the last room before both bosses. It is also the room with the most enemies. To start off with, we will be introducing a new strategy that we will use in every room past this point. The Orbital Strike. Mmm, crunchy. All we have to do now is make a saw trap and try to line up the sword machines and the fireman so we can use a blue railgun on them. Apart from that, this wave is pretty easy if you just move about a lot. So you can do whatever you prefer here, but save your saw blades for the next part. Now, four sentries and an idled scorpion will spawn. Since the sentries are in each corner of the room, the best route I found is to shoot some blue saw blades between the two sentries, killing both. If they aren't lined up anymore, shotgun swapping is a pretty fast way of killing them. 
As the third wave begins, look up and grapple towards the virtues. Try to kill two with one shot of the blue railgun, then grapple the last one and shotgun swap to kill it. There should be four Cerberus and a Scorpion in the middle of the room. They are most likely covered in sand, so healing is nearly impossible. I have found the best strategy is to poke the Cerberus from range using the SRS cannon, piercer and electric railgun. Once they're all dead, use saw blades to deal a large chunk of damage to the scorpion and just poke him until he dies. All you have to do now is break My the last idol and kill the stalker. Help, please. Guys, 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 if this is if we do good on Nopticon, we're actually kind of chilling. Hold on. Hold you, you, you. Fucking pardon. Going? Yeah. Oh, darling, I'm going to start going. Oh, no, okay. I don't know why I did that, but that happened. Don't clip it. Oh, we are, we are, if I do good here, this is it. Oh shit, please, no pressure me. Um, oh, I'm scared now. Oh my God. Uh, I do not feel safe. Your theme song is playing, my guy. You got to do good here.
so complete the life and times of King Sisyphus. A fitting end to an existence yeah. defined by the Yay! Yay! Well, let's fucking go! Okay, so! Key free next. Hello? Yes, please. Let's fucking go! Yeah! Screenshot. Wait, fuck that. I want a proper screenshot. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Whee! Let's go. Woo! Woo! Oh. Yeah. Yes. Let's fucking go. Oh, hello, Marcel. What's up? I did the thing. Yeah. Yes! I'm very happy. Look at how good my time is! I'm the best of my friends! Let's go!